Hi, we're here at CES 2014. I'm Scott Stein. And I'm Bridget Carey. And this is part one of a three-part wearable tech show we're doing. We're looking at headgear. Now, there are so many wearable tech products at this show, it's kind of nuts. There's too much to track. There are startup ones, so to speak. There are startup ones. There are all sorts of different parts of the body, so we're breaking it down, and we're starting with the eyes. Google Glass, obviously. You may have heard about Hi, that. Hi, I'm the resident glass hole. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously apps are being developed for that, but there's more stuff going on as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the others is Oculus Rift. You've heard about that. That's really something you use in you know, a living room entertainment with dreams of going mobile. But there are other things uh, that are looking to get that home entertainment experience. One of them is the Avagant Glyph. And this is a different type of projection technology. Some companies are looking at developing new types of projection technology. I'm going to try it on right yeah, now. Yeah, and this, that's using, okay. this is a virtual retinal display. This is using Texas Instruments DLP technology to put a 720p display on your retina. It's projecting. And it can project 3D images. It can also project 2D. It can connect via HDMI. So you're looking at entertainment with this. It's designed in, in a, in a, in a you know, high-end style headphone uh, you know, rig. So you use it as headphones, you wear it on your head like yeah. this, and then you flip down the visor, which has got the eyepieces. Oh yeah, here we go. So can you talk about your experience? So can, you, can you see it? Yeah, so uh, I'm watching a movie, actually. Actually, and, and it's very easy to see. I mean, it's not uncomfortable at all. It's very clear. What does it look I'm like? I'm not going cross-eyed. I feel a little bit like Jordi LaForge. <laughs> yeah, it's like a scanner. Now, you know, this, the, the idea here is that you're not going to be obviously scanning the yeah. environment around you, but there, are, uh, there, there is a peripheral vision element so that you don't, you know, wa walk into something, hopefully. But you're not going to walk while wearing these. But no, if you, you wear them on I, a train. I had to take them off. I, I was like, I can't see you, you know? Yeah, so uh, that's the idea here. And there is the potential to do more virtual reality type stuff with, a head, with head tracking uh, capabilities. This is, a, this is launching on Kickstarter um, for $4.99. And you know, th this technology we looked at at CNET, and it was before it actually had a design. And now it has this design, which I think is it's pretty awesome that it was built into headphones. And it's got a control on the, on the side here. There are actually buttons and a little, little spin uh, flywheel. Yeah, that takes care of um, you know, all of your media controls. And it's hooked up to an iPhone right now, playing a movie. You can actually play real racing on it. You should, oh, do you want to yeah, put I it on? Yeah, I want to play a game. Are you kidding here. me? Here. All right, so we were, I was just watching Pitch Perfect. Here, put them on. <laughs> okay. There's actually a text coming in, too. And it will mirror, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mirrored connection, so you can actually navigate your phone and, and open up any app. It's, it's meant as a, it's treated like a display. So you're really looking at display technology here. Uh, right now, I'm just seeing the, the iPhone screen. Oh, so and go. now the game loaded up. Swipe Load to get started. Let's see. And why don't we just play this part? Oh, you go ahead. Good idea. Here, I'm just going to grab this. And go ahead. Um, can you see it? Can you see it operate? Yeah, I mean, I'm really just seeing the screen in front of me. This is kind of interesting. All right, it's, it's loading up right now. This is like having a, a massive like game system in front of you. It's kind of cool. I mean, when I use them, they actually can, can adjust with diopters to different prescriptions. Um, I'm a really intense prescription of minus nine. And this, uh, you know, I was still able to make out that it was very vivid. I felt like there was, there was a, a, a more vivid look to the display. Um, you don't really see the pixels quite as much. Um, but it's a, it amounts to a 720p resolution. Oh, this is pretty cool. I feel like I'm in one of those like arcades where like you're just totally immersive into it. It's like a little movie theater in your head. It's like a little projected uh, screen. I'm someone who, who gets uh, prone to being dizzy when I'm into something like this, and uh, absolutely not. Like, it Do you feel any dizziness? Right no, not at all. Although, I kind of stink at this game. <laughs> but I'm getting better. You're doing okay. Yes, you can look down. Looking up is harder, but you can look down into the sides when you're wearing it. Yeah. No, very so cool. That's, uh, you know, that's, a look at, that's a look at the Avigant Glyph. I now, mean, I yeah. can see myself being on the subway, totally ignoring everyone with this. <laughs> right. um, it, I think it's interesting, not just for the tech, but again, what do you do with these displays? How do you wear them? Google Glass you know, is small, but it looks like something that's hanging in front of your face. Yeah. This is trying to look like something else, so it's an interesting idea. Now, going into, you know, th there are augmented reality technologies. There are a lot of them here at the show. Some of them are in startup booths. Some of them are behind closed doors. Epson 
uh, already had a pair of augmented reality smart glasses before, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Moverio BT100s. This is the Moverio BT200, and the idea here is that this will be for consumers and for, for, for other people, for more, um, you know, maybe for business use. Mm -hmm. And these are going to be available for $6.99. Now, the design is kind of funky, but the display is actually projected right in the middle of the lens. These are, I think, 60% thinner than before so unlike, they designed them. So unlike glass, we just kind of have to look up and to yeah. the side to see it's right in the middle of this the field is right, of vision. This is right in the middle, and it's a middle ground because instead of something floating in the corner of your eye, you're going to see, you should try these. Yeah. Um, and we have someone here from, from uh, Epson as well. Maybe can, do you want to set up to use it? Um, Thank well, you. While we get set up, you, I am just seeing um, the uh, yeah, phone screen you floating should, uh, right in front of me, like, free. like in this little chunk. Yeah. I can squeeze it. <laughs> so the display hangs right in front, and again, can project 3D as well as 2D. Oh, and if you look at this control, it's, this is not a smartphone at all. This is a touchpad, and as I move my thumb, I can see my cursor go. It's an Android console, so this can run apps. Um, this actually has, and it, it, you know, it's Android 4. It, 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 uh, it has you know, full touch controls. Mm -hmm and a little micro SD card slot. And, 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 and it can connect via Wi-Fi, connect yeah. via Bluetooth, and you control it with what that. What should I try? And we've, also got, uh, and we've also got sensors built into the glasses so that uh, it detects motion as well as a front-facing camera. So it's really an ideal augmented reality platform. Yeah. So um, I'm going to hit the home screen, and what you're going to see is a series of apps. I do. I, um, I, I, it looks like an Android home screen to me right now. You're over here in the side. Floating, Flip it over. Floating, floating, well, in, the, your, uh, floating in front of your view. Yeah. And let me uh, grab the glasses yeah. off you real quick so I can uh, load up some content for you. And so I tried using this, and you, you could stream something like um, 3D YouTube videos. I mean, you could stream 3D content from the internet. And then for everything else, it kind of goes back to that entertainment mode where you could play and use uh, you know, any content uh, on it and be able to see it floating in front of you. But then there's the second element of augmented reality applications where uh, there, there, are, there are some ideas and games that you can move your head around and you know, shoot things out of the sky that are, that are floating around you or pick out points of interest. Um, so it's another alternative. It's, it's a floating in front of your face alternative to glass. Yeah, so the game I'm going to load up for you is called uh, Cyclops. It was actually developed by uh, you know, a, a well-known glass developer, Sean McCracken. And it is a, kind of a light virtual reality game. Um, it is done in real dark colors, so you can actually uh, see through it. And you'll sweep your head around, and you're going to be immersed in this uh, virtual city. And if you look up, you're actually going to see um, spaceships kind of shooting down at you. And what you want to do is focus your target on them, and you can shoot them out of the sky. So let me. Uh, now, apologies. We were originally going to bridge this to show uh, what it was going to look like via Wi Fi Direct on a screen, which it's capable of doing. But we're having some shoddy connections here. So you're going to have to. All right. Watch somebody using it, which is a, you know. I will try to make very interesting experience. facial expressions to express how great this is. I've already tried this, and so, you know, give it a whirl. Oh, so uh, what am I looking for here? Oh. So you're looking for alien spaceships oh. floating up in the sky. Oh, I see them. <laughs> 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 it's right over our boss's head, <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> Sorry, Lindsay, I'm shooting you right now. Um, yeah, so they're kind of like floating among uh, the crowd right now. It's kind of interesting, you know. I mean, I look like a little bit of a geek. I mean, you can't really see my eyes if you're trying to make a conversation with me. I see them, but it's like <laughs> you've got crazy bifocals on or some sort of futuristic uh, yeah. multi-lens. I think it's cool that they are right in the middle of the lens and that you don't have anything, you know, uh, mm -hmm. quite on the outside. It projects through a little bit. And uh, Epson's vision for these glasses is really not to have an always-on type of use case. Um, you know, it's really uh, for specific purposes. So when you want to have some big screen entertainment content on the go, or even uh, some of the uh, stuff you touched on earlier, Scott, was uh, enterprise use cases. Mm -hmm. So we were working with a number of Fortune 100 companies with a partner of ours, Apex Labs, to uh, help out what they call the deskless worker, yeah. uh, really making workers more efficient in their uh, jobs. Well, thank you. So, Very I mean, cool. that's, that's a look at the Epson Moverio BT200 smart glasses, which are here at CES, and one of a lot of different types of display tech. We didn't even get into Oculus Rift, but they are showing stuff behind the scenes with new positioning technology, and they've improved the blur, and that's pretty impressive too. But there are more, and that's a brief look at some of the tech in wearable glasses. Now that, that is actually CES 2014. <laughs> I was going to say, that was pretty cool, because I can pretend I'm working and also play games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, and, and that's, that's a bit of the spectrum. I'm Scott Stein. I'm Bridget Carey. And that's Glasses Wearable Tech at CES 2014 here in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with more wearable tech next.